Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we are making almond covered shrimp balls. Another lovely recipe for my dim sum collection. For those of you who don't know what dim sum is, it's like Cantonese style brunch that all the food are prepared in bite size. You can order a bunch of different stuff and enjoy them with tea. I'm a huge fan of it, so I do have a playlist of all the delicious dim sum recipes that I love. The link is in the description. You can check that out later. I actually had these shrimp balls in a dim sum restaurant in Florida. It was so good that I feel like I had to make it to share it with you guys. So let's get started. First, you will need some peeled and deveined shrimp. Use paper towels to absorb the excess moisture because it does affect the consistency of the shrimp paste, especially if your shrimp is previously frozen. Use a heavy-duty cleaver to smash the shrimps one by one. If you don't have a cleaver, a meat tenderizer will also work. Then we'll finally chop the shrimp meat. You can toss everything into a food processor and blend all the ingredients together. But I like my shrimp balls to have a little texture in it, so I prefer to chop my own. Actually, shrimp is like the easiest meat to chop. From where I started smashing the shrimp to when I finished chopping, it took less than 5 minutes, including me moving the camera to shoot the video. So don't be afraid, it's not that difficult. Let's put this into a big mixing bowl. You can use all pure shrimp meat, but I like to mix in a different type of protein. You can do ground pork, turkey, or a nice piece of fish fillet. I just happen to have a piece of boneless and skinless chicken leg meat in the fridge, so that's what I'm using. You just do the same thing and chop the chicken finely as well. Set the mixing bowl aside. Let's prepare the seasonings. You will need one clove of garlic. I roughly chopped it. Two slices of ginger. One piece of the white part of the scallion. Use scissors to cut it smaller. Garlic, ginger, scallion. These three ingredients are like the basic aromatics for Chinese recipes. Let's continue by adding two tablespoons of fish sauce. It is known as a Thai ingredient, but fish sauce actually has an important role in South Chinese cuisine. Next is one tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine. What I'm using is Shaoxing wine. Let's cover this and blend everything into a puree. Use a sieve to get rid of the solid part. Then we will crack in one egg white. I accidentally dumped the whole egg in. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Luckily, I'm able to take it out because it's not broken. You can use it to make another dish such as my general sauce chicken. 3 tablespoons of starch. Cornstarch, potato starch, wheat starch will all work. What I'm using is sweet potato starch. I'm going to grind some white peppers. I like to twist the adjustable knob to the fine setting, otherwise you will notice those rough pepper bits. It is fine in taste, but you do want the shrimp balls to have a soft and smooth texture. A few shakes of onion powder, 1 teaspoon of sugar. It is optional, but I found it does make the fresh shrimp taste stand out. Half teaspoon of salt or to taste. Last a big drizzle of sesame oil. Get your hands in there and start mixing it. You could use gloves for hygiene purpose, but I like to work with my bare hands. That way I can feel the consistency of the mixture. Again, using a food processor is a nice shortcut when you are in a rush. Although the texture will be a little different, the taste is still the same. Once everything is well combined, you can stir the mixture within one direction for 5 minutes. After that, grab the paste and throw it back to the bowl with some force. Repeat this for another 5 minutes. This helps the protein to combine together. Then the shrimp balls will have a firm but also soft texture. This is what you are looking for. It is very sticky. 
add some minced carrot. It gives a bright color. You can use other vegetables such as scallion, cilantro, even diced green or red jalapenos. Just remember one rule: always add the vegetables the last because they do slow down the protein from binding together. Set it aside. This is the sliced almond. I have tried other nuts such as diced walnut, crushed peanut. They work great, but I do like this one better because it's so thin that the crunchiness does stand out a little more after being fried. We need about one and a half cup. I would suggest you use less first and add more if needed because you can't reuse the leftover almonds once it touches the raw shrimp. I got a bowl of water for you to dip the spoon in so it doesn't get sticky. You will also need a tray to collect the shrimp balls once they are done. Okay, this is my favorite part. Use your left hand to grab a handful of shrimp chicken mixture, gently squeeze it, and a little ball will form up. Use the wet spoon to scoop it out. It seems a little tricky. Let's get a closer look. You can practice a few times, and I'm sure you will master it. It is not that difficult. Once you get used to it, you can just do this again and again. It's quite fun. Put the shrimp ball into the sliced almond bowl. Use your right hand to pick up the almond slices and coat the ball surface. Lightly press the almond so it sticks better. There you go. That looks lovely. Put this away. Keep doing it until you finish everything. The amount that I gave is enough to make 20 to 25 almond shrimp balls. We will let them sit for 15 minutes. While waiting, we can heat up some oil. I'm using peanut oil. You can also use corn, soybean, sunflower seeds oil. Quickly take a look at the shrimp balls. Because of the gravity, it will have a flat bottom. That is okay. You just reform them before you put them into the oil, or leave it because it doesn't affect the taste. Bring the temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn the heat to medium low. Add the shrimp balls in. The ingredients will drop the oil temperature down a little bit. That is okay. We do not want to fry them on high heat. Otherwise, the almond will get burned before the inside gets cooked through. Also, don't touch the shrimp balls immediately, or else the almond will fall off. At least wait for 15 seconds. Gently stir them around to ensure an even color. This will take about seven to eight minutes. The almond should be golden by now. Take them out and fry the next batch. Unlike bread or flour coating, you do not need to double fry them because the nuts can stay crunchy for quite a while. We are done. Use paper towels or a basket to get rid of the excess grease. This is a perfect party food. I like to put them into these small baking cups. It's easy for the guests to grab and enjoy it. The dim sum restaurant where I had these almond shrimp balls. They serve them with hoisin sauce. It is like Chinese barbecue sauce. If you don't have it, you can use American barbecue sauce. It will work just as well. Personally, I think they are delicious on their own. If you dip a little touch of chili oil, it will just be perfect. It is so flavorful. The inside is soft and tender. I love the nutty taste from the almond. Nice and crunchy. This could be a surprise dish for the party. I mean, look at them. If you don't say anything, people will think they are some sort of dessert. Trust me, you will definitely get lots of compliments on these savory bits of meatballs. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.